Welcome to today's community call. Uh, this one is going to be very eigen focused with like a special look at Pendle YT short dated versus long dated and all of the strategies uh, involving those two as well as this really uh, strange looking calculator that I have made. It is uh, big, it's bulky, it's um, certainly extra and it is free for all you guys to use because you are, uh, you know, you're in the dojo. So link is already posted in the chat. It's it's my eigenpoint calc. So it's the same one that has like this on it and the gearbox calculator on it. And uh, yeah, well, it has two of these just so you can compare stuff. Um, but now it also has this thing. And so we're going to talk about this thing today and, you know, maybe get into anything else at the, at the end here. Um, I do. So let's let's go over some of the basics and please. If you have any questions, feel do like do not hesitate to ask them in the chat. There are no dumb questions. If I talk to anyone who was in DeFi for like you know only a year, uh, they would think all of this is is like French. Or if you speak French, I know we have some Canadians in here. Uh, I don't know um, Vietnamese. If we have some Vietnamese in here, maybe it's it's uh, some other less known language. Whatever they whatever they speak in like uh, Chad. You know the capital of Chad is Ninjamina. What a great capital name. Anyways, let's get into it. So basically, blues are inputs as always, greens are outputs, um, but what's going on here? Well, uh, first we need to understand what Pendle is. So to understand what Pendle is, let me actually open up Pendle. Uh, and let me see, is my VPN on? Yes. Pendle now requires VPN. So, you know, it is how, it, 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 that's just how it goes. Um, but I do have VPN on, wonderful. Pendles right here. So basically, we're looking at the yield opportunities uh, for the YT assets. You can see here we have YT Renzo ETH, Swell ETH, Kelp ETH, and Etherfy ETH. We actually have Bedrock ETH as well. And you can see the price of these YT assets. The lower the price of the YT asset, you know, Uni ETH being the lowest, the more of them you can buy, which means the more eigenpoints you can buy for cheaper. Uh, basically, the YT asset, if you guys don't know, just represents the yield of the underlying LST or LRT. You can also buy Athena points. This is actually a really, really interesting play that people are going crazy for, which is why there's a 75% fixed rate yield on your stables. Absolutely nuts here. Um, and the expiry is like super soon, 33 days. So you're like getting locked in 75% uh, APR fixed rate for 33 days. Amazing. Not 75% ROI. That's totally different, but 75% annualized fixed rate for 33 days. Anyways, we're not talking about that right now. We're talking about these guys. Uh, you have Puffer, Uni, EETH, RSETH, RSWETH. We're going to focus on RSETH today because of KEP. And so let me also be pulling up KEP on uh, Dex Screener, CoinGecko. Either one works. They both populate. So if we go to here, right, you can buy uh, some amount of YT RS ETH with ETH. Um, you you might get a better rate if you buy it with RS ETH, but not really. Um, I was looking at both of them. Because of the value of RS ETH currently, it's, it's roughly exactly the same. So you can see I can get 12.07 right now, uh, YT RS ETH. What does that mean? It means that I can buy the rights to 12.07 uh, RS ETH. Now, what what yield am I talking about there? Like what yield am I, am I buying the rights to? I'm buying the rights to the underlying actual APY of RS ETH. So there is like 3.5% intrinsic APY, or sorry, 3.1% underlying actual APY in terms of ETH. Then I'm also buying the rights to the points, the eigenlayer points. I'm also buying the rights to the kelp miles. So I'm buying the rights to three different types of yields here for 12 different uh, RS ETH tokens, right? That's kind of awesome. Now, what is all this then, right? And what am I comparing? Well, I want to compare, this is the long data one. You can see it expires in uh, June 26, which is, what is that, the end of, or is that that's the beginning of Q3, right? No, Q2 ends on the end of June. So uh, this is the very, very end of Q2, which, you know, recent Eigen estimates uh, by the Eigen team actual have Eigen day happening sometime in Q2. So. This is like the longest you might want to stretch it, uh, but we also have the arbitrum markets where you have RS ETH expiring in 54 days, way sooner. This is like smack dab in the middle, uh, maybe like actually early, sorry, maybe first month of Q2. So if you think it's gonna be early Q2, maybe this is the best play. We're gonna look at all these assumptions in a second here, but look 
here. If you wanted to buy, oops, if you wanted to buy uh, YT with your ETH here, look how many more you'd get. So you get 12 of the long-term data. Here you get, I think, what is it, 21, 21.65? That's nuts, right? That is a lot of ETH yield right. So now we can sort of start to understand what's going on here. Let me make sure, are there any questions here? Uh, bonjour, hey, hey, uh, and much better. Cool, glad you can hear me. So I've entered all this information, right? Uh, let's also do like a reasonable principle. Let's do 10 ETH as principle. Uh, short dated, this is like, when is the expiration for the shorter term YT? And I've just entered 424, 2024. That is, just, that is correct. You can find that uh, here, right? 424, 2024. Yes, it's American dating, guys. Don't uh, judge me. That's just how my default dates go. Um, and then long dated is June 26. You can also double check that by going over to Ethereum and then just looking at it. You can see it is June 26. So there we go. Now I will be currently checking out the long dated because that's what I what my own position is uh, because I believe it is slightly better given my own personal assumptions right now i'm gonna let you make your own assumptions but i'm gonna my point here is to allow you to express your assumptions and then get good data right i'm not here to tell you what to assume i am here to give you a tool that allows you to express your assumptions so all right uh base eps per day this is eigenpoints per day what is the base rate it's 24 eigenpoints per day if you natively staked your eth on uh on eigenlayer right now the effectiveness is how many points you're actually getting. Now, effectiveness can actually go anywhere between like 90% or 88% or 85% all the way to like 95%. So a really, really effective LRT protocol um, might have 95%. EtherFi itself fluctuates between like 92 and 98%. Uh, Kelp says they do the same, but they haven't shown me the actual number. So I will have to do the math next update, which should be tomorrow morning to see how effective they actually are. Now I've assumed 90% because I like to be bearish. Uh, I like to think that they're not super effective. Um, and so the lower means the more bearish my assumptions, which means I should, uh, if anything, be like me have my expectations met or potentially exceeded. And that's um, that's the way I like to live my life. <laughs> Low expectations. Uh, be bearish on on bullish things. So short YTs per ETH. We just looked. It's 21 point. What was it? 21.6. The unfortunate thing is that if we did 10, right, if we actually wanted to buy these things uh, on Arbitrum, we might have a price impact. So we might not actually be able to buy uh, at that price because there's very little liquidity on Arbitrum, but there's a ton of liquidity on uh, ETH. So you won't have much of a price impact on ETH, but you will have a pretty large or substantial price impact on Arbitrum. So let's go over here. Let's do 10. Let's see what our price impact would be. I'm going to guess like 1.3%. No, 2.25. It's crazy. So 2.25%, uh, effectively 21. That's, that's still really good. It's 21.2. That's nuts. So let's go over here. Let's go 21.2 because let's just say we want to put like size in there and let's also do the same thing on uh, ETH just to, you know, have the most up-to-date numbers. So let's go here. Let's do 10. Uh, oh, it looks like price kind of went up a little bit. Uh, so it's 12, roughly 12.06, right? So 12. 0.06. All right, cool. Eigenday. Now this is a big assumption. Eigenday is when you actually think the uh, the points will stop and the token will launch, or like the points are stopped. Like Eigenday is really when points stop. Um, and then like, you know, it can launch whenever really after that. But when points stop is when points stop diluting. And when points stop diluting, effectively the value is more or less locked in relative to FDV. So eigenday is when points stop. This is your own assumption. Now, again, the team has said uh, early mid Q2. I'm going to take that as late mid Q2 to late, late Q2 to maybe even early Q3 because this is DeFi. And if you ever worked with the DeFi protocol or project or chain or anyone in DeFi, uh, things tend to be later than they say. Now, this is probably true for a number of industries, but it is particularly true in this industry, at least so far as I have noticed. So I'm going to say 520. I think this is like a pretty decent estimate, but I've said that about every other estimate that I've had. So uh, take this with a grain of salt and then, you know, do as much research as human 
humanly possible to get your own best estimate of Eigen Day because this is going to have a large impact on what's better. If we do a shorter Eigen Day, let's just say 420, which is what we used to think, uh, you can see how all of these things change. The long is no longer better than the short under almost any metric. But if we go farther out, which is 620, which was another thing we used to think, then long does get better in every version of this later on. So <clears throat> it really does depend on your own personal uh, anticipation. I'm going to go with uh, 520 right in the middle. And I think it's, you know, it's kind of a little bit after uh, the middle of Q2. So <clears throat> to me, it makes sense. Uh, pendle fee. So pendle takes a 3% fee uh, from the yield. Now, not only from the LRT yield, but also from the points yield, which is why, you know, I, I've put this in here. Uh, this assumption is built into the calculation. So do add, do make sure there's 3% there. Um, I wouldn't change this. This is just like it is literally the fee pendle takes. Uh, no need to overthink it. Um, there are no short dated uh, YT tokens on Ethereum for RSE. I do think there might be a short dated one for... Um, Maybe ETH? Uh, no, Renzo. So there's a short-dated Renzo one. Uh, this is the only short-dated one. It's it's Renzo, and it's actually pretty decent. Uh, well, it's kind of expensive, I guess. <clears throat> so there's two ways to look at this, right? Uh, the higher the fixed rate APY, the more expensive relatively the LRT is. And I say relative to the date, not relative to uh, actual price. You can see it's cheaper, 171, so you'll get more of these, but it's more expensive in terms of uh, what you're paying per eigenpoint. So that's another way to think about it. Okay, <clears throat> so going back, why is your short and long YT divided by 10? Uh, I don't understand. Why is your short and long YT divided by 10? Ooh. Oh, 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 it's not. This is just, this is how many you would get. Um, this is how many YTs you get per ETH. Uh, I was putting in 10 ETH because I wanted to see what the price impact would be. But for any, like, uh, effectively, this is what I'm getting per ETH. So I'm getting 212 for my 10 ETH, but per ETH, it's 21.2. That's why. Okay, cool. Um, okay, so LRT point value. This is the, like, you know, this is just me and Dingo spitballing and speculating on what a kelp mile might be worth. Uh, we have a pretty decent idea of what a uh, EtherFi point is worth because EtherFi like has already is already on whales market. There's, you know, already market makers estimating. And so we just effectively said, well, what if the what if the uh, market cap FDV at launch for kelp is half of EtherFi, right? Um, we did that. Then we looked at the like points actually available, made some assumptions, and this is the price we got, right? So it's it's a rough estimate. It could be way higher, could be could be lower, but we tried to go pretty bearish on our estimate here. So there we go. Uh, pendle slippage. There will be slippage to enter and exit. You can even go a little bit higher. You can go 1.5%, right? Uh, maybe even 2%, depending on how much you're buying. Th I've tried to build all of these things in so you have the most accurate uh, ROI. So one point. So this is going to be also um, doubled. So it's assuming a slippage in and slippage out. So like whatever you put in is, is half of the slippage that will be taken out of your position. So do keep that in mind. Uh, estimated market cap for kelp on launch. So I am going to estimate uh, something like half a billion, 500, 500 million. I think that is super low. I think they're going to do like 7 to 8% airdrop. I think they're going to have like at least half a billion FTV, which to me seems crazy insane low. Um, I also think that like EtherFi could probably launch at 5 billion uh, reasonably. I mean, FTV is a total meme on day one. Uh, Dimension launched at some ridiculous billions. Jupiter launched at some ridiculous billions. Gito launched at some really absurd tens of billions. Uh, <clears throat> I think Etherfi and Kelp have a good chance at launching in the billions on on the first week while FTV is still a meme. Um, but this is with an assumption of 500 million, right? So super, in my opinion, super bearish assumption. But you know, we'll see. We'll we'll, we'll see. Uh, okay. So and then Eiger Eigen Layer Point Value. So this one is uh, literally just like an Eigen Layer Point. Um, on whales market, they're around 14 cents. Uh, my own personal assumption is that they're going to be worth 20 cents. I think these things are going to be worth way more. Um, so like, here's my math. If we look at, uh, we can look at the Eigen dashboard. This is where I get the numbers from. I should be able to pull these, but I'm just, I don't do live stuff very well. I just don't mind copying and pasting. So here's how many total ether in there right now. 
I'm just gonna paste that in there. Uh, and then I'm gonna paste the total points in here. Uh, blah, 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 points, there we go. And I really think that like 35 billion is totally reasonable considering Tia is like 20 billion. Uh, and this is this should be way bigger than Tia. And so I'm, uh, this is kind of a bearish assumption for the total FTV airdrop. Tia did 6% FTV airdrop. I think Eigen could do six to seven percent, but I'm gonna go with six percent. And then this is my Eigen day. So with though with these assumptions, uh, we have point value at 20, 20 cents, right? Twenty, and I think this is reasonable. I also think this could be seven percent. This is seven percent, and this is. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, mute you. If this was forty billion, right? We go all the way to twenty seven cents. But let me be bearish, right, and go with these assumptions. Also, thirty <clears> percent <throat> linear growth. This, this so far we have not been seeing these growth rates. We have been underperforming this growth rate. So, uh, you know, those are my assumptions. I think they're reasonable. I think they're reasonably bearish, which I like to be. Um, and so, you know, we can. I'll I'll even be more. I'll be bearish here as well, and only go to seventeen point five, right? Okay. So, uh, that's where I'm at. And then finally, cap price, whatever cap is. So let me o open up cap. Cap is currently thirteen three one. Hey, look, it's it's pumping. Um, I want to put liquidity right underneath it, but I'm waiting. F well, I'm waiting for the right moment. I need a little bit more liquidity for it to make sense for me, uh, but I, I want to add liquidity here. And we're going to go over that <coughs> uh, a little bit later. So where were we? Cap price at 13. Look at that. 13, 3, 1, 3, 3. All right, cool. That actually changes estimates quite a bit. All right, that's all of the inputs we need. Everything else will be done for us. We've, we've finished with the inputs. Now let's understand how to interpret the data. Right. Uh, so if your principal is 10 ETH, you have bought, if you're buying the long term, you've bought 120 YTs. If you're doing short term, just check this. It means you bought 212 YTs. Uh, yay, you. And everything sort of changes. Now, look at the annualized APR here. This is really important. Watch the annualized APR. Uh, short dated, 245%. Long dated, 266%. So the long dated APR, if Eigen Day is 520, is actually better. How nuts is that? The long dated are actually better. Now, there are some serious additional assumptions we need to understand. Most of them come in this column, YT value. We are assuming linear decay, which means by the time they expire, they linearly go down to zero. Except, except I have also said after Eigen Day, they're going to be worth zero anyways. That's not true. They won't be worth zero. They'll be worth like, <clears throat> they'll be worth one tenth of their value. They're going to go from like 30% implied APR to like 3% implied APR, maybe up to 7% because there might still be a point system. Like there might still be kelp miles to be farmed or whatever, like ether five points. There might still be some points to farm there, but after Eigen Day, <clears throat> Like the value is going to plummet. And so once the date is officially announced, if it's officially announced, now sometimes these things are announced the day before. I hope that's the case. That would be amazing uh, because then, you know, you can exit maybe, maybe early May. I think that would be reasonable. Or, you know, try to exit maybe late April uh, and get, get all of that value back from your YT. Who knows? There's going to be fluctuations in the YT price. If you look at YT <clears throat> here, you can see the price goes up and let's go to one day. The price goes up and down. You, if you're going to exit after farming a bunch of points, you want to exit on a high, right? Now I kind of bought on a high. Don't judge me. I bought like right here. Hopefully it does go a little bit higher. Um, I have already exited a little bit of my position uh, at the tiniest profit. I'm not, I'm not sure I actually made profit because of gas was so high, uh, but I did the same thing on Arbitrum, but with much smaller positions, so it didn't really matter. But you want to try to time that a little bit, uh, and you probably do want to exit before Eigen Day. Now, with short dated, maybe you don't care, right? Short dated, uh, most assumptions have the short dated ending prior to Eigen Day. So you're, you're just coasting on your points for, you know, you're coasting on your points for, in this case, where's count? Oops. Uh, almost a month. So if you do just short dated, you're coasting on points for like a month. You're just like, I made enough points. I'm done. My YTs went to $0. I'm fine with that. And now I'm just waiting for the airdrop, like passively waiting. You can do that. That's fine. Uh, but you can see how many points you're, you're just missing out on, right, uh, in that interim. So 
Assumptions have long-term beating short-term with the big caveat that if for whatever reason, Eigen Day is actually announced, uh, you have to know the long dated YTs will start to plummet in value. Uh, unless, unless Eigen Day is like, oh, we're going to do Eigen Day in early August. Then I imagine YT's long day will actually go up and the short terms will plummet because it makes them, it makes these more valuable uh, in the long run. So <clears throat> that's the first thing to understand about these assumptions. Now, uh, let's look at a few of these outputs. This is live. Don't touch this. This is just the live ETH price. Um, this is your principal. This is just literally this times live ETH price. So the principal in terms of value. Uh, effective eigenpoints per day. So uh, you know how the eigenpoints are actually supposed to be 24? Well, your effective eigenpoints per day is based off of the LRT effectiveness. So we said that like EtherFi is roughly 88 to 96% effective. You know, it bounces around in that range. Uh, I'm assuming that kelp is also roughly somewhere around 90% effective. So this is the real amount of eigenpoints you're going to get per day, <clears throat> per YT, right? So 20 EPs per YT per day. Uh, and then here's like the short effectiveness, EPs per day, short effectiveness, LRT points per day, LRTs, just the liquid restake token point. So it's like kelp miles or ether five points or whatever. Um, and then we have a few like date things here, days to YT expiry, days to long YT expiry, uh, days to eigen, eigen day, uh, and then like the depreciation rates on all of this stuff. So if you want to look at any of these things, I think it's cool. It's interesting. Um, Certainly, this is more for like the nerds and the data junkies. Uh, <clears throat> if you have any questions about any of these outputs, feel free to ask me. I love talking about this stuff. Um, you know, it's like anytime I get to avoid my other <laughs> like BD stuff or like, you know, uh, grinding away at papers and like grants and stuff, I, I love the chance to do it. So feel free to distract me. ROI right here. So this is your ROI based off of your long. If you can look at your ROI based off of your short, uh, both of them are good. Like there's not a massive difference. And I will say the short data ones, just letting them go to zero and still getting a really good return. Not a terrible thing to have happen. Uh, <clears throat> but again, if this goes out longer, if we like, we really do wait until the end of Q2, uh, then like it's a clear difference. Um, long is remarkably better than short, right? So the longer Eigen Day actually is, the better the YT longs are. So just keep that in mind. Um, now let's go back to the 520 because it's, it, you know, I don't know if it's better or worse. It's just what I've been working with. Let's look at these charts. Once we look at the charts, then we can finally start talking about strategy. So what do these charts tell us? This is just for points. This is uh, comparing the short dated and long dated eigenlayer points and the short dated and long dated LRT points. Again, the LRT points are kelp miles, ether five points, swell pearls, whatever. Like all of those things are, that's what those mean. Uh, so here you can see that you will get more eigenlayer points. Like you just, you just will get more eigenlayer points um, virtually under any scenario uh, currently based off of the prices of the YTs if you get the short dated, right? <clears throat> Now, where you get torn up, where you get absolutely wrecked is your YT value because this is just decreasing so fast. Like if you look at the depreciation by the end of next month, uh, you can see there's a $10,000 difference on your principal. Like it's just going to depreciate way faster because its date is so much sooner. So yes, you're getting more Ether 5 points and really like that's your game. If you think Ether 5 points are going to be worth 30 cents per, 40 cents per, like $1 per point, which is which would be absurd. Uh, and like that's like a $70 billion valuation um, and like a 10% airdrop. But if, you, if you're that bullish on eigenpoints, then short data is definitely the way to go, right? Maybe you want to diversify. Like Cryptherb, he's saying he's bought both long-term and short-term. I think that's not a bad idea at all because... Uh, that way you really are hedging your bets against an early, uh, airdrop or a late airdrop. And then also you're really maximizing your points on one and then you're maximizing your, your like the retention of your YT value, uh, with the other one. So great to diversify and who knows, there might be some hidden benefits that we haven't considered yet to that diversification. Now, so you can see like the, the solid lines are the EL points and really just like the short is is just doing remarkably better. Um, but this changes. So like if you wanted to buy a bunch, like if you tried to buy uh, 50 ETH worth, you're going to be getting a much worse rate like 19 <clears throat> just because of price impact or even 18. And if you try to buy the same amount, you're going to get almost the exact same rate here. So you can see these things change a lot by your size. If you're a smaller 
I mean, you know, like this is a ridiculous size, like 50 would be a ridiculous size, but uh, really based off of how much you're investing, it's going to impact really what is the best strategy for you. Now let's go over, let me just control Z all that because those rates are, you know, technically right for 10 principal. The dotted lines are for the LRT points. So here you can see <clears throat> the LRT points are actually better if you're long uh, after 610, which Really, like that's pretty far away for them to be better. Uh, maybe, maybe points have already ended. We don't know. Maybe like the airdrop has happened. We don't know. Many of these protocols have said they're going to do their airdrop like in tandem or like soon after Eigenlayer. Now, whether or not that happens, who knows? I do imagine all of the massive airdrops will happen after and will try to happen soon, uh, soon after Eigen Day because they want to ride the hype. And also like if Eigen Day uh, goes well and Eigen Token does well, they want to ride the that thesis. Like Dimension did incredible because of how well Tia did uh, and because they piggybacked off of Tia's success. So there's a good chance if Eigen Day is, you know, May 22nd, uh, that like kelp day or ether day might be soon after like very, very early <clears throat> June, but like early June, that's kind of when these get better anyway. So, you know, maybe it's roughly break even on those points. Now let's look at this. Now, what is this, right? What does the assumed value mean? Well, assumed value means the actual assumed value of the strategy. So like when is the strategy better? Uh, the strategy is better for long, like at the end of May. So by Eigen Day, it is slightly better. Now, why is that? Well, because you sort of stop here with your short and this is like your YT value is zero. 100% of the value here is in terms of kelp tokens, which you can't realize until kelp day and etherfi tokens, which you can't realize until etherfi day. So you're you're, you've effectively burnt all of your ETH. You have no liquid value. We do, well, cap is, is the caveat here, and you're just coasting on those points. Here, you do st still technically have YT value all the way until the end of the day. And it's reasonable to assume there will be some value, so it's not actually like a, a goes to zero. Um, that's one thing to consider. So let's look at a few additional assumptions. If point value is lower, whoo, uh, then this goes up faster. The lower this goes, the faster or the better long is. Also, the farther this is, the better for long. <clears throat> you can see all of these different assumptions. So all things to keep in mind. But again, we're going back to 520. Now, what what am I doing and, and why am I doing it? I am using RSE because of KEP. <clears throat> if you guys don't know what KEP is, um, do be checking out the Eigen layer chat uh in the discord because we have just been like talking about every single possible angle to to arbitrage points and do strategies of points cap is one of the many lego pieces that is part of this I have to keep drinking tea because my throat's getting sore <coughs> from all my talking okay here what is cap if you guys don't know cap is a tokenized representation of eigen layer points that's it one cap represents one eigenlayer point. You can mint cap against your own eigenlayer points. You can see I have already claimed 10,944 cap and I immediately dumped it uh, just to like, see, I thought I was going to get a really good deal on it and I like had a super, super great deal. It was like 33 cents per cap. Uh, I sent it and then I went to go pick up my son and uh, I forget it was, it was Ozzy who messaged me and he was like, your transaction failed. <laughs> I was like, oh no. And then by the time I got back and I got home, uh, like it, it had gone down by half the value and gas was still high and it really was not like a awesome thing to do. Uh, so kind of bummed on that, but Anyways, sold my first batch of cap. Um, not sure what I'll do with the next one because cap right now is at 13 cents. So 13 cents cap, <clears throat> we have an assumption that points will be worth maybe up to 20 cents. From 13 to 20, what is that? That's uh, equals seven divided by 13. That's a 53% ROI, right? 53% gain, uh, our assumption is. so. If we assume Eigen Day is 520, then 53 cents in that time. Let's just do some quick math here, right? 53 times, uh, what is that? 365 divided by this number minus today. 
uh, that's 242% APR. This might be the best strategy of all, but there's, there's very low liquidity. But if you think that a point value is going to be 20 cents, like just longing cap <clears throat> right now at this price, not a, not a terrible thing to do. But when would you want a long cap? Like that, that's an excellent question. Thanks for asking. You would want a long cap right when the next batch of points goes out. Some people don't care about Eigen Day. They only want to exit these points, opportunity cost, whatever. They just want to like farm, exit, have real functional, tangible ROI. There is just people, a bunch of people who are bearish on Eigen points. You know, they, their thesis may have changed. They may have different assumptions or parameters. They're going to exit and they're all going to be able to exit at the same time. So once a week, <coughs> Kelp opens up the ability to like dump your cap, right? Or I think I think it's the same time every week. Uh, I could be wrong on that. I'm pretty sure it's the same time every week for everyone, not like one week after you dumped. I could be wrong. I'll ask them. I'll get clarity. But if it is the case, like that's the day that I would buy. I would wait for that dump and I would just like scoop them up at like 12 or 11 cents. Because uh, <clears throat> at 11 cents, like that's nuts, right? At 11 cents, you're just, you're, you're killing it. That's like what, nine out of 11, which is 368% annualized. If you can get kept at like 11 cents, uh, I would definitely buy it, right? So that's just a totally different thing. But like, so what I am farming YTs because it gives me cap. And if cap pumps past 15 cents, I am going to sell. I think it's risk adjusted enough return for me uh, that I can realize it immediately. And the next question is what to do with that ETH, right? Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'll tell you why. My thesis is <clears throat> I want to hedge against early Eigen Day. Because I'm in long dated, which means I have a I I win when Eigen Day is farther out, and I lose if Eigen Day is sooner. So how do I hedge against that? Well, you hedge against that by buying the PT, because the PT right here it has an implied fixed rate. No, sorry, not implied. Has a fixed rate APR of thirty percent. So if you have one ETH right now, you can buy <clears throat> like one point. I don't know, one point zero nine. You can buy one point zero nine. Now that's great because this will always give you one point zero nine ETH uh, at the end of expiration. So in one hundred and seventeen days, you'll get one point, roughly one point one. Um, R one point one ETHs worth of RS ETH back. <clears throat> now. This is going to, like, the arbitrage between these two numbers is going to close remarkably fast when uh, when Eigen Day is, right? So by buying these in the interim, by just, like, scooping up a PTRS ETH every now and again, uh, I am hedging a little bit because when YT points devalue, these will appreciate in value. So one, I'm buying exposure back in ETH, which is what I want. Like I'd, I would prefer to be exposed to ETH than exposed to points, uh, honestly, because you know if one is one feels great when the market pumps, so the other one is like, I don't know what these are going to be worth. And so I would rather be exposed to ETH if possible. And then I also get to hedge my exposure here with a fixed rate return that I, that I believe is going to close way faster than the actual uh, fixed rate return. So that's, that's my uh, deal. People have said like, well, why don't you compound? And it's a great question. I was looking at compounding. Um, the only problem with compounding is like, you have to stop sometime. Because if you just keep buying YTs and buying YTs with all of your kelp points, well, by the time Eigen Day happens, you'll you'll have no more Eigen points because you sold them all to buy more YTs. So if you're going to compound, you have to be very tactical about it and you have to have some additional assumptions. And that just didn't seem reasonable for me to invest a lot of time into. I did like a few cycles and said, okay, maybe it makes sense to invest the first round, maybe the second round. Uh, but after that, like it really doesn't make any sense because you can only do this once a week, right? <clears throat> and so I have decided that buying PTs makes more sense for me and my thesis where I get to hedge and get exposure back to ETH. Like, so that that's what I will be doing. Now, Let's look at like week one, right? These are my assumptions. So let's just say you put 10 ETH in. Uh, we're kind of ignoring gas here. Hopefully gas goes down below 40 in the next week. We're <clears throat> So we're assuming, you know, no gas, but I know that's a thing. Um, in a week, you should have generated on your 10 ETH $4,000 of, of uh, cap points uh, 
if you're doing short or $2,300 of cap points if you're doing long. Now, <clears throat> you think, okay, well, it's better to be short. Well, let's look at the total value here. So total value, this is, sorry, this is actually not total value. This is the value of your YT, assuming linear decay, <clears throat> plus the value of those cap points. This is not including your kelp miles, which add an additional, effectively additional 4,000, additional 2,000 here, right? So uh, the your miles will be worth effectively the same as these. So you can just double these numbers if you want to see like how much you'd actually be. So like <clears throat> you can see your principal is here. Uh, it looks like you only got a thousand dollar ROI, but really you're getting like an additional four thousand dollars in kelp miles, but those are just not realizable until some indefinite future. So, anyways, which one is better? Well, you'll notice that long is actually a little bit better, which is crazy. Um, and if we let's just make slippage more reasonable. Uh, surprise, it didn't affect these numbers. <clears throat> so, I think that long is still better if you're planning to farm some quick points and exit and you can see like down the line it just long just gets better and better and short actually gets worse and worse this is negative roi the only reason this does better is because the assumption of lrt points if we put this to zero which i don't, th I don't think we should uh oh the oh this is just number of points yeah if we put this to zero you can see like everything goes lower and long gets way better, way faster. So that's kind of important to know, right? Uh, that like the short data one is really, really lopsidedly betting on the success of the LRT points where the long data one is more betting on the success of eigenlayer plus the value hold of the YT asset. So <clears throat> that's sort of what we're looking at. Me, I do plan on exiting maybe in the next two weeks. So if I look another week out, uh, this is the 13th, maybe I will at that point have made, uh, you know, my ROI at that point really isn't amazing. It's $700 on uh, 33,000. So it's a thousand dollars, right? Yeah. Roughly a thousand dollars on $33,000 over two weeks. So let's do a thousand dollars and $33,000, uh, that's way more than that. I added a zero, let's minus this. And then we're just gonna multiply that by 26 because that's two weeks. And what do we get? 70% annualized. That's okay. And that doubles when you include the kelp points, but it's one thing to consider, right? So if I'm annualizing 78%, I'm pretty happy exiting there. Uh, the reason why I'm happy with that is because in my opinion, some of the liquidity pools, which is like the last thing I'll talk about today, some of the liquidity pools for LRTs, which is what I've been farming historically, have dried up a bit. Puff ETH, people race to the bottom with the fee tiers there. Um, even though there's still volume, uh, much of the fee tiers are being sort of like dampened and dampened and dampened. Then there is uh, RS ETH, which is still actually pretty attractive, but you have to be in a very, very competitive range. Uh, and that's roughly it. I think here is like, thank you guys for watching all the way. This is what I will reward you with. I think that one of the real plays is adding liquidity here. And like I said, I do plan on doing that once I have a little bit more liquid capital. Um, I'm you know kind of waiting for a pendle pump here because <clears throat> I want to exit maybe around break even. Like I've done my math. If I exited now, I should still be in a profit next week when the points come out uh, because my points will be worth like, a couple thousand dollars is going to be roughly a thousand dollars of like Im immediate loss. Uh, so it should still be a profit, but I'd, I'd like to see one more little pump on um, the YT if possible. Because if you look at this and just do the numbers, let me uh, show you guys how crazy the numbers are on this pool. Maybe I shouldn't because then you guys are going to go dilute it before I get in there. But you know, you guys pay for the service. So I owe you. I owe you all of my success. Uh, let me bring this calculator over here, go over to calculators and yeah. So right now volume on cap is 343,000, right? So let's go over here, 343,000, three, four, three, one, two, three. TVL is, uh, and I wouldn't like go crazy diluting this guys, but I know gas is high. So, you know, you kind of makes you feel like you need to two, seven, eight. So go over here, there it is, 278000. 
Look at that. Average APR, 450%. Now, here's the downside, right? There are risks. There are risks. One, you're losing your exposure to ETH. To some extent, it's, it's almost like having an ETH stable pool, uh, which I don't like in a bull market because I feel like you are... Uh, you're just you're you're giving up a lot of your upside. Now, 450 percent almost makes it worth it. Um, but here's the other part of that: if the points tank, which they probably will at some point, there's it's going to be volatile. Next week's release, there's probably going to be a tank, right? It's probably going to go to like 10 or 11 cents. At that point, I think buying them is a great idea. The liquidity that you had on hand to buy them is probably, if we're going to be honest with ourselves, is probably the same liquidity you would have used to just buy the points. Right. Uh, and so like now you're holding all these points. The only way for you to benefit from the arbitrage, which is like you bought, you, you know, you bought it at 10 cents or you're like your price uh, is roughly like 10 or 11 or 12 cents. You have to exit your LP and wait until eigen day. And I'm just going to tell you psychologically, that's very hard. If you're getting 450 percent APR and now you're suddenly out of range, the odds of you saying, OK, time for me to hold is, is just very low. You're probably going to ape back in. You might eat some permanent loss. Uh, you might get torn up a bit. So these are just like, these are psychological barriers and, uh, and hurdles that you're going to have to overcome. This will be a volatile pair. Um, ETH might pump, might say, oh no, I'm missing out on price action. There's going to be a lot of things that might happen here. Uh, now, one of the other things to consider is that um, it, this could spike up. And if it spikes up, now all of a sudden you're all in ETH. That's not a terrible thing because presumably you you had some benefit or some profit in ETH, but now you have <clears throat> impermanent loss. You did not benefit from having just held the eigenpoints. So if you're going to do what I am kind of probably going to do, which is take your cap uh, next week and LP it, just know that uh, your price point is 13 and like the top of your range is effectively what you're willing to sell it at and you're DCAing out all the way up that range. So if it's like 13 to, to 19 or 20, like just know that's the top and probably it's not going to go to 20. Like let's be real. It's probably going to hover between like uh, 10 and 15. That's my assumption. Um, that would be like roughly my range if I was to do this. And uh, so like exiting at 15... And this is going to be your points, right? So then Eigen Day happens. Eigen Day points are actually worth 25 cents, 27 cents. You're not going to get that value because you decided to LP with your points. So you do have to think like opportunity cost. <clears throat> is it worth it? Um, a lot of different things to consider with all of these. <laughs> you know, like it's so speculative and so crazy. But my goal, again, is to give you as much as many tools as I possibly can uh, so that you can speculate, uh, speculate, um, wisely or in the most informed way possible, right? So there's so many unknowns, but at least like we can work with the knowns that we have. All right, I'm going to stop talking for like the next minute because one, my throat hurts and it's dry. And two, I want to give you the uh, awkward silence that forces you to ask questions. So um, here it is. Yeah, it's uh, it's it is so much. It is really a ton of data <clears throat> to crunch, and we could compare this to like whales. We could compare this to, um, we could look at Gearbox. I do think it's worth checking in on. I was so excited about Gearbox because of what they had said and what they said their assumptions of the cost to leverage were going to be, because it was an interesting way to keep your principal and also get leverage points. It was a really, really interesting idea. Uh, but then like the cost to borrow skyrocketed and it made everything less interesting. So let's actually, will we will take some time to look at that. But let me answer your question first. So uh, ICE9, <laughs> um, have you heard any rumors about Eigenlayer capping the number of tokens? Yes, no, 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 no. So not capping the number of tokens each address receives. I have not heard about margins. Uh, I think they have to 
They have to do linear. There, there's no, I'm like, they're going to be there. There's no reason to do margin um, or like min max here. It would be so bad for them uh, because so many systems have relied on their points. They want zero bad press day one. It would be ridiculous. And like every protocol that I've talked to that, like, I think maybe has to sign an NDA when they're working with Eigenlayer has hinted at the fact that it's definitely going to be a linear uh, airdrop. So like you will get Eigen tokens based proportionally on how many points you have. That is what I've heard from everyone, though there are many people who are scared of a margin system uh, that would like behoove Sibblers, maybe be smaller wallets, um, and like really hurt Pendle and Whales and like all these other systems that like are trying to leverage up these things to the max. Okay, so <clears throat> Moose, um, would you be able to add the ideal ratio between long and shorts to maximize profits and points? Uh, no, because it's based off of like, it's, it's, it's binary, right? There is no maximum. There's no best ratio. Uh, it's one of them is better under X assumptions and one of them is better under Y assumptions. So if you change your assumptions, you change which one is, is better. Now, what you could do is split your capital and say, uh, I have two assumptions, and based off these assumptions, I want to go into this much amount of PT and this much amount of YT. <clears throat> now, I can't do that calculation on the fly, but sure, that seems calculable. Um, but like, there, there is no, in reality, right, it's like Schrodinger's cat. It, it is either dead or alive, but there's, you, know, you just don't know until you open the box. That's how it should be, honestly. Not how many people can perceive of it. Uh, and so, like, we don't know when Eigen Day is going to be. Um, and so, like, we can hedge our bets, but we can't maximize our bets. Because if our bet is wrong, uh, then hedging would have been the best case. Actually, no, if our, if our bet is wrong, then, then doing the opposite of what we did it would, would have been better. Uh, hedging is a way to participate in both. But if we were right, then doing just the one thing would have been better. So, like, this is, you know... With everything, if you're right, you benefit maximally. If you were wrong, you benefit minimally. And if you hedge, uh, then you benefit the mediumist, uh, not maximally, not not minimally. And uh, so I, I think that uh, I am right with maximizing and doing the long term and then trying to exit my YT sometime in like late April or early May. I think that is the best. So that's why I am personally like, almost all in on that specific strategy, but I could be wrong and I'm willing to take the L there. Uh, well, I'm willing to take a bit of the L there. If, <clears throat> if I will probably like slowly exit my position. So I'm like really, really farming now because I, I am very confident that Eigen Day is not going to happen like next week or the week after that. I don't know, but I'm very confident it's not going to happen very soon. So I'm going heavy, heavy, heavy right now and I will slowly exit my position over the next few weeks. As, as I get more and more scared of uh, mid-Q2. Okay, cool. Let's look at, um, please, these are, these are phenomenal questions. Uh, I can maybe run a scenario analysis. Hey, you know what? Always take Cryptorb up on his offers uh, because he works too much and it's always good to give busy people more work. <laughs> uh, you know, have you guys ever heard the saying, if you need something done, uh, give it to a busy person? I love that saying. It is amazing. Um, so yeah, maybe crypto is a good guy for that. Uh, okay, let's look at Gearbox and I'm gonna show you why we're looking at Gearbox. I was so bullish on Gearbox. It's like almost <laughs> almost sad uh, that this happened. But maybe I'm like maybe it's changed. It probably hasn't changed. Let's look at EtherFi. That's like the OG. Um, let's put in five ETH. Can we even leverage up five ETH? We can. Uh, 29%. Okay, so let's go to my eigenpoint, not eigenpoint, let's go to my gearbox calculator and add the metrics here, right? And just see what we get. So eigen day, we're gonna move that to five now. Um, whoop. And this is days out. Leverage, six is fine. <clears throat> uh, points multiplier, that's still two. Borrow interest rate is 29%. ETH value, guys, can you believe when I built this calculator just like a week ago? ETH was at 2,900 just a week ago. How crazy is that? What are we at? 3,300 roughly. Um, and then uh, it will be principal. Uh, let's do five. And base, that's okay. So <clears throat> what do we got here? Based on 
20 actually it's still pretty good annual return 200 percent. it's not bad roi 44 percent under this time frame um it's still pretty good now what are we assuming eigen point value i mean honestly 15 15 right uh points per day ether five point actually ether five points probably gonna be around 0.5 let's be real okay so that reduces that to being comparable with the other <clears throat> and so uh and actually this is gonna be more on 20 because of the uh, efficiency metric. So it does reduce this. Actually, is not as good as the YTs, but still really good. So you know what? I'm not as bearish. I was I was bearish. I'm not as bearish. The other things to consider, though, and these are serious things to consider, is that when you leverage, uh, you will be eating slippage to exit and you will be eating slippage to enter. And that slippage is multiplied by your leverage uh so whatever your leverage is i think the minimum you can do at five is is six you will be eating you know the swap fee let's just assume the swap fee here is like five point zero five percent five bips times six so it's 30 bips you're gonna eat 30 bips plus price impact which could be like another i don't know percent uh to enter and to exit we don't know how efficient the, like they're routing their swaps. So, you know, it says slippage up to 0.1%. <clears throat> Who knows how it will actually work. And uh, yeah, so those are all things to consider. Also, this is a variable borrow rate. So this could also go up higher. If we look over at Renzo, maybe Renzo is better. Maybe it's worse. I don't know. Uh, 23%. So this is actually better. You could do Renzo instead. Um, I don't know. Renzo points. <clears throat> so they're also doing a 2x multiplier. Um, you could do Renzo, and that's, you know, maybe better. Uh, I don't know what their efficiency is. That's the one thing that also matters here. So I take it back. I am not as bearish. Uh, I'm a little bearish, but I'm not as bearish on this strategy. I still like it. And it does look better at uh, with Renzo, but not by much. You know, it's like what really matters to you is how healthy the peg is going to be which one is under peg so i would check the peg prices of like easy i think it's easy uh easy eth and i would check the peg price of um ether eth first i think this one is like spot on because they have so much liquidity in so many places renzo might be a little bit more uh volatile you would want to leverage up when it's when it is uh slightly under peg because so there's a big sell-off that's the time you'd want to leverage up and because then you can benefit from the appreciation as well. Uh, and so there we go. So yeah, I am actually not, I am not, this is still a good strategy. Uh, I don't, I don't dislike it. And you, you kind of keep your principal, right? You kind of like you do lose. If you look at this, uh, there is a negative 115% implied uh, APR on interest. So like you're paying 115% on your principal to, to borrow <coughs> over the, over the course of, uh, 81 days, which is rough. Um, but you know, for a 37% ROI after accounting for the borrow cost. So it's really not that bad. I mean, like it's, it's rough, but like you are still anticipating a profit. All right. Uh, what, what else do you guys got for me? Any other questions? Let's, we can check out whales in the last minute. Um, please, if there are any questions, feel free to ask them. I'm going to pop open whales here just to see uh, if the speculators have changed their mind on any of these uh, token prices. All right, what do we got? We have point market. Oh, pre-market for stone? No, I thought I saw a stone. No, ruined stone. I thought it was um redstone. Not yet. Okay. Point market. Uh, Zeta, don't really. Blast, parcel, Camino. Mm. Oh, Ether five points. Are these still around 0005? Zero, 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 Ooh, zero, 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 nine, eight? Really? Oh, man. That would be awesome. Uh, because then we could effectively say uh, that this should be higher. Where is it? This could be, um, this should be eight. And that just makes like the actual numbers awesome. ROIs get super cool uh, there, 56%. And like short might even, no, short's still not as good, but short's, short's getting pretty good there with those kind of things. Uh, that's great. So I love to see that. This is actually really bullish for EtherFi. Um, and I think bullish for, at, as a result, also bullish for... Um, 
kelp. Okay, and then where the heck is uh where is where's is Eigenlayer? Oh there it is. Okay. 15, 16. Ooh, I, this is awesome. So it looks like people have been scooping up the 14 cents. Uh, and now like our bottom is between 15 and, and 17. Yeah, I think these are more reasonably priced. Also makes me more bullish on uh, kelp. I do think that like just buying cap right now and longing it is, is not a bad idea. Um, because like these are very, very annoying markets to participate in. Cap is super easy. Once people understand cap, like it's this is day two of cap, by the way. Once people understand cap, I do think it's gonna be like the best priced representative of a point by the time eigen day happens that's just my opinion okay um do you have any plays for our plays yeah <clears throat> what you could do is you could sell your eigen layer points at 15.5 and then buy kep and you arbitrage the difference there right you could do that I mean, there are so many arbitrage plays. Oh, do you mean like for Arbitrum? <laughs> yeah, just just do the same. Uh, like Cap is going to be launched on Arbitrum on the 11th, so like in 12 days. And then um, the YT assets exist over there as well. I think Gearbox is actually going <coughs> to Gearbox is actually going to try to go to Arbitrum, which is amazing. Uh, but what they're like, how they're going to get there, and what their timeline is, I don't know. You know, uh, sometimes these things are really fast. Sometimes they take forever. I also want to check out Athena just out of curiosity. Uh, okay. Wow. I have no idea how many shards there are. So these, these numbers mean nothing to me. Um, but I feel like you could look at Pendle and then look at these and then get a decent idea of, uh, of how well these are priced. Anything else? Frantech? No. Okay. No, no kelp miles here yet. Camino. Oh, what are these? Neat. All right. So that's all guys. Thank you. Uh, we got one more from Crypto. I'll wait for him to type it out as well as IFX. Ice, not IceX. Ice. Nine, uh, thank you. Oh, cool. Yeah, I'll look at that. Awesome, fantastic job on this. Thanks, man. Um, for any newcomers in the dojo watching, this is some of the best alpha. I'd like to think so, and this is because I have been like so uh, aggressively pestering all of the all of the Eigen protocols, trying to get more information. I hope that it pays off for us, um, but you know, we'll see. Thank you guys so much, and as always, have a wonderful rest of your night.